regularly and I get feedback that a lot of you are seeing this program. We are doing it for the last 32 weeks. We talk about a range of issues about South Asia on environment, on, on climate change, on health and the related developmental issues. And since last week we are talking about the issue, I think the only issue which we can talk about right now is Corona. Corona tsunami continuing. We called last week program Corona tsunami. Today we are calling it Corona tsunami continuing. And really we would like to know about the situation on ground. We really would like to know how this whole issues of second and third waves are go happening, how they will be happening in future. We would like to know about the treatment protocol, they keep on changing. We would like to know about the variants which are really people are now talking about this T41 and S43 and likewise. So the, all those jargons are coming into the picture now. Uh, before I go to that, let me, let me share with you that this program is brought on by the Climate Channel Canada in collaboration with the Plural, the media platform in India, and also the No TV Bangla, uh, Bangladeshi YouTube channel, which has more than 80,000 subscribers. As I already said, today is our 32nd episode, and we call this episode COVID Tsunami Continuing. Uh, let me first introduce a very, very eminent panel that I have with me for this evening. I have Professor Rajiv Dashgupta, who is a professor of Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi, India, a public health expert, and also member of various important committees in Government of India. Welcome, Professor Dashgupta, to the show. Hello and thank you. Great. I have with me Dr. Ajay Sharkar, one of the frontline doctors fighting COVID in Kolkata, India right now. He's from the Peerless Hospital. Welcome, Dr. Sharkar. I know I can see that you are right now in the hospital, but you are making time and this is for the larger audience and really, really appreciate your presence. Welcome, Dr. Sharkar, to the show. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Panelists. Great to have you. I have with me Dr. Shanjay K. Rai. Dr. Rai is the professor of Community Medicine in All India Institute of Medical Science, New Delhi. Uh, he is a vaccine expert, he's a public health expert, and at this point of time, more importantly, he is the national president of Indian Public Health Association. Welcome, Dr. Rai. I know how busy you are, but you, you could accommodate today's program. Really so wonderful of you. Thank you for the show. Thank you for being uh, here. Welcome, Dr. Thank Rai. you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. Thank you. Great. It's a pleasure. It's a privilege. I have with me Dr. Shahidullah Shikdar. Dr. Shikdar is the former Pro Vice Chancellor of Bangabandhu Medical University, Bangladesh, an extremely well known public health personality from Bangladesh and really, really a wonderful part of today's panel. Welcome, Dr. Shikdar, to the show. Hello. 
Welcome you everybody here now. Thank you very great, much great. for inviting me. Absolute privilege. I have with me Dr. Vinaya Aryaratne. Uh, Dr. Aryaratne is a community health expert again. He is the president of Sharbadaya Sramadan Movement. Uh, I think the biggest NGO grassroots organization in Sri Lanka. And he also happens to be the past president of College of Community Physicians in Sri Lanka. Welcome, welcome Dr. Aryaratne to this show. Thank you. Very pleased to join this panel. Absolute privilege. Uh, I have with me, very importantly, Shubhra Priyadarshini. Shubhra is the editor of, of Nature India and a colleague and, and, and really, really would like to know from her the bird's eye view because I know that she is in touch with all the eminent scientists across and getting the feedback. So really, Shubhra, looking forward to have your input on the situation on ground right now. Welcome, Shubhra, to the show. My pleasure. And uh, finally, I, I expect uh, uh, Dr. Shubhra Jyoti Bhomik. He's yet to join, but he will be soon joining, I am told. He is the clinical director of research from the Peerless Hospital, Kolkata. He is being involved with various trials of, uh, of, of vaccines, more specifically Johnson and, and Sputnik. So really, uh, when once he joined, we would like to know from him the status of this vaccine and the whole process of vaccine. So that that's the whole panel for all of you. And and before I before I go over and start uh, with Professor Daj Gupta, perhaps uh, just would like to give a ground level situation as I have with me on the data. Last week when we did this program, India was on the rise, on the rise, rise, and rise. At that point of time, India's seven-day average was about 3.5 lakh COVID patients per day. Now, during the last one week, thankfully and hopefully, this whole number came down slightly. But again, as I said, number is an official number. There are so many talks about the figures genuinity. But the number went down to 2.83, so less than 3 lakh per day now, right now. So the depth number is quite high. Bangladesh is also a bit downwards, around 1,500 patients per day uh, as of yesterday, but the seven-day average is about 1,000. Sri Lanka is on the rise. On the contrary, Sri Lanka is on the rise. And the last seven days, Sri Lanka had about 2,900 COVID patients per day. Nepal also downwards slightly. Pakistan also downwards, though there's a wave going on in Pakistan. And Afghanistan is almost kind of, Afghanistan and Bhutan is not that much. So that's a South Asian situation for all of you. Let's start with Professor Daj Gupta very briefly. How is the situation on ground, Professor Daj Gupta? Um, thank you once again for the invitation. Uh, looking at India as a whole, as we know, the daily new cases are on the decline. That's a uh, perhaps, and I just say perhaps, beginning to plateau. Uh, on the other positive side, the effective reproduction number that's slowing down, the positivity rate uh, on the aggregate is down, though certainly above the 10% uh, danger mark. Uh, but what's worrying is really the decline in the vaccination numbers. Uh, we can talk about that later. But overall, it may certainly be the picture that it is a positive turn of things, but that's coming on the back of nearly six weeks of lockdown across uh, most of the affected parts of the country. What we also know is that at least uh, in a dozen states, more than 50% of the newly diagnosed cases are being reported from rural areas where we know that uh, laboratory tests and diagnosis is relatively weaker. And despite that, in more than a dozen states, 50% of the new cases are from the rural areas, which means that, and which has been acknowledged by, the, uh, by all governments, that it is now spreading faster in the rural areas. Okay. The Ministry of Health has also come out with an elaborate advisory uh, on managing it in rural areas. And that's really where the focus is. Okay. In fact, uh, Honorable Prime Minister, uh, in a meeting a couple of days back, also mentioned about this this threat in the rural areas. Uh, uh, 
let let very quickly also know from Dr. Rai. Dr. Rai, well, well, according to you, how is the ground situation in in India? Do you agree with Professor Dash Gupta or any more point you would like to add? Yeah, I I fully hundred percent agree with Professor Gupta. So first, good good evening, all the panelists, um, our dignitaries, um, media person, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, really, I like to thank you. Um, Mr. Jantu Basu for having me here and really sharing this special occasion with all of you. Um, you see, in India, the first wave, there are uh, different scenarios in first wave and the second wave. First wave was predominantly urban. Uh, so majority of cases reported from urban. I agree with Dr. Um, Professor Gupta that um, in second wave, the current wave, now it's um, uh, many cases, almost 50% cases are reported from the rural area and day by day increasing. If you see the one week um, ago, the figure was, it's almost 40%. So now it's 50% and gradually it's a rural increasing. The deaths also reported, large number of deaths reported from the rural area and that was not happened during the first wave. So. <clears throat> This is the uh, actually uh, different. Now we are facing different picture and so challenges becoming different, different and different. And uh, definitely, it's an um, entirely different picture now. Uh, and, uh, very and high infectivity rate. Entire family members rate. they are getting infected. So all these are different from the previous. Rate. And yeah. considering that about two third of India is in in rural in India, rural area. And as I say that now the COVID is spreading from India to Bharat. Yeah, so it's spreading uh, from India to Bharat, Bharat uh, going into although, a rural base. Although so it's few, getting more and more yeah, difficult. Few, and, few days ago, government of India has um, um, uh, introduced some guidelines for the rural area, uh, rural management, how to manage cases in the rural area. And then we'll come to that. Containment the, measures, yeah. Do we really have the infrastructure? We can always issue the guidelines, but do we have the infrastructure to, to identify, locate, and then treat these patients. We'll come to that. But very quickly, know the other countries. Let's go to the Bangladesh. Dr. Dr. Shahidullah, what's the situation in Bangladesh right now? Thank you very much. Actually, you see, at the early time, when it was started in the uh, uh, last March, uh, you know, in the 8th March 2020, it was first discovered in Bangladesh. But uh, uh, now the situation is uh, going, actually, you have already reported that uh, in the middle of last year, it was uh, peak and uh, somebody was assuming that uh, it will go up again in uh, November or December in the, or in the January of this year, but it was not happening. You have seen, you have uh, uh, just gone through this data that uh, our incidence number was raising in the middle of uh, March of this year and it is it was peak in the last month the april and after uh, at the end of the april and the beginning of the uh, may it was gradually uh, declining and at present you have seen that the incidence rate is not uh, uh, so high it is about uh, uh, seven or nine uh, against the uh, uh, number of investigation uh, and mortality rate also not so high now it is uh, uh, gradually declining and uh, a bit, I can say that this is a bit uh, satisfactory level because uh, in the, uh, from our common experience of uh, data that uh, you have already shown that uh, Nepal and India, those who uh, raised uh, uh, in the peak, but they are also declining. Bangladesh was not uh, against the uh, number of population, it was not so high, but uh, we are very much satisfied that our government, especially our Honorable Prime Minister, she involved our common people. She is directing our people. So, uh, so you feel the situation is under control? Yes, yes. So we feel that but, the situation but, is more or less under control. Great. But tell me one thing. Uh, India is just, Indian experts are just saying that in India, now this whole COVID is now entering from the urban and peri-urban area to the rural area. Are you, are you seeing the similar kind of trend in Bangladesh? Because no, if you actually, just go, I, I am, I, I've been to Bangladesh a number of times. Once you go out from Dhaka and you go to the interiors, it's a different world altogether. Uh, so just like India, the infrastructure is not that good. The other factors are there. So what about your rural area? Actually, you see, 
India and Bangladesh is more or less our uh, social structure and all other yes. uh, things are more or less similar. But even then, our experience is that it is actually not, this is not true for Bangladesh. Actually, the number of patients are all, all mostly all are coming from urban areas, especially Dhaka, Chittagong, Rashtai, Silet, like this uh, uh, urban areas, big cities. In the rural areas, our Upojala, you know, the sub-district Upojala, uh, Thana's previous Thana. Okay. The incidence number is very low. Uh, in the part uh, Thana, you will get about uh, six lakh. But uh, are, these, are these data credible data? You, you feel that these data are credible data? Actually, uh, you have already mentioned that this, these data are actually the person, those who are, uh, are actually feeling that they have some uh, symptom or suspected patients or they have some necessity of conducting uh, okay. uh, investigation, they are knocking to the center and they okay. are uh, giving the sample. And against this sample, we are uh, calculating the percentage okay. of incident. Okay, we'll, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. Good to hear that Bangladesh is have the situation under control. What about Sri Lanka? Sri Lanka, not that control, not that yeah. under control. I no, 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 Jayant. So good evening. Uh, so Sri Lanka is in the third wave now. We had the first wave uh, uh, from March to uh, uh, June last year, and then again a second wave from uh, October up until uh, end February, early March. Then we have had our Sinhala Tamil New Year in April middle of April, and since then we have seen an exponential increase in the number of cases reported. So as you said, about 2,500 to 3,500 cases on the average the last two weeks. The deaths are also rising. It's nearly 1,200 deaths uh, as we speak now. And also we have for the first time, we are seeing uh, the, the healthcare system, the hospital uh, capacity is also being exceeded because we have a government policy that every COVID positive patient is admitted to a care center or a hospital in Sri Lanka. So as a result, even though we have 31,000 active cases in Sri Lanka right now, only 20,000, 22, 24,000 capacities there in the hospital system. So we are now desperately, the government is trying to increase the bed capacity and uh, we are facing a very, very challenging time. Are you, are you also seeing the similar kind of trend uh, shift from urban and peri-urban area to rural areas, like what India yes, is experiencing? Yes. At the moment, it's mainly in the western province, the largest number that is Colombo and the suburban districts, but we, we get uh, cases reported from all districts of Sri Lanka every day. So all the numbers districts. are less. So it's very difficult. I can say that the rural areas are uh, less affected right now, but we see the transition because of the mobility. The so the transition is happening. The transition is happening. happening. It is definitely okay. happening. Yeah. I'll come to Dr. Ajay Sharkar for knowing the treatment part of it and also the actual situation on ground in the hospitals. But before that, Shubra, Shubra, if you just kind of quickly give us a quick bird's eye view on the South Asian situation overall. Yeah, thank you. Um, for me, the uniqueness of the second wave lies in a couple of things. I mean, we know what how a virus pans out when it uh, becomes transmissible or more virulent, whatever. Uh, for me, the thing that uh, trend that catches my eye is number one, uh, in the second wave, the number of variants that we are seeing has increased, which means that, uh, and there are studies which support the uh, evidence that uh, it could be the reason for one of one of the reasons for the higher transmissibility of the disease in South Asia. Um, that is one thing, the most primary one. The second thing is we are now getting the first signs of drug use on patients, especially steroid use, in terms of how they can manifest in some patients, which is as you all know, myco uh, mycomycosis, uh, mucormycosis, which is the black fungus spread happening, which is now being called as an epidemic. So that's the fallout of long-term drug use uh, on certain number of patients, certain kind of patients. The third thing that, uh, that comes out uh, for me as striking in the third wave, in the second wave, is that we all know that there is, there is a third wave coming. And the fact that 
the government as well as you know scientists across south asia are looking at alternate methods of tracking the spread of the disease in terms of epidemiology uh, uh, and i would want to mention wastewater epidemiology as something that is being looked at very seriously right now uh, it has a if you track wastewater from communities uh, from drains and uh, nalas and yes. uh, and of course the uh, lakes etc you can figure out in the fecal uh, you know viral shedding uh, when the next wave is going to come when the next peak is going to come because it gives you 14 days is, is that study is that study has the study started in right earnest yes i mean not in the right earnest but the scientific community in this country is more and more like to know that there have been demands in the past okay. to amp up uh, diagnostic testing right now the demand is for wastewater epidemiology to be amped up so these are so the basically as you are saying that with third wave coming we all know trying to find out the indicators yes how how we can kind of predict when it will be coming how big it is and all these factors so very important you mentioned three points and three very very important points and that takes me i think now the now the kind of platform is that sarkar all these points are coming to you that you have been treating the patients from last march 2020 march so you saw the first wave now you are seeing the second wave we are all talking about the difference of first and second wave now the third wave is imminent and uh, and and uh, shubhra just mentioned about the drug abuse Uh, the black fungus not the white fungus is also being talked about uh, so all these issues so how how different and difficult the treatment on ground right now is dr shorka yeah good evening everybody i'll start from the first wave that when we uh, say before 2000 we didn't know anything about this virus it was totally new to us so we know we knew about corona virus but that was different even the sars and mars was not like this so we have been struggling initially first part that what should be done for this patient we didn't have infrastructure in that way so we we, we developed our infrastructure in each and every hospital the corona unit the itu corona because that we all knew that this is very infectious but not like the phase 2 and uh, as a intensivist i had a problem initially we we didn't know about how to ventilate them because every patient uh, when they are going into ventilator was behaving in a different way so the gatanani i could remember in may he described two theories uh, and uh, that theory was initially accepted by every everybody in the world and then again he also described that probably this is not the right it is not everything uh, for everybody so every patient was different in the first phase phase and we could manage to treat them after 6 months in a proper way then we have classified the disease process early and late early is behaving in a different way late presentations in the hospitals were behaving in a different way so we have been uh, trying to manage them in a different ways and the regarding medicines as the doctor has mentioned that steroid uh, after remedy trial it has been successfully shown that it has got definite uh, mortality benefit and also morbidity or length of stay so steroid is the cornerstone of this treatment that is no doubt about that but there one might question about the doses about the durations and others that issues are there but steroid has to be given now i will come to that regarding abuse of steroid later part of my talk second is antiviral we always been trying different antiviral in a different ways and we couldn't find a single antiviral medicines except ramdesivir ramdesivir has shown in the animal study in the lab study that it has got viricidal effect on the coronavirus too but when we have started in the human body the solidarity study of who has said that it doesn't have any effect but other studies 
from different parts of the world has shown that this could reduce the mortality in certain extent and also can reduce the oxygen demand and from moderate to severe progression. Yeah, because of that, FDA has approved these medicines and we have been trying. Yeah, honestly, I started using Ramdesivir from the very beginning whenever that medicine was available in our city. And the statistics will be different for different parts of the world. But I'm sure this is only drug which can do some effect. I'm not saying in 100%, but if you ask me the percentage, is a statistical so, jargon. It has an effect. It has, it has an effect on effect. the treatment. Hard is anticoagulant, mm. but that is another part one must not forget. But this disease starts from some uh, effect on the capillaries, on the venules, on the arteries, and thromboembolism in arteries and veins is a well known established fact with that disease. What we see in the initial part is happy hypoxia, we call it. They are hypoxic, but they don't get any symptoms. Reason because the process started into the pulmonary capillaries and they get the uh, ventilation perfusion mismatch without affecting the alveoli. And unless they are uh, being affected in the alveoli, they don't get any dyspnea. So that is one part. So probably one should use this anticoagulant, we have been using okay. this three okay. But okay. the second part phase, uh -huh. I'll just touch, second phase is something which is different from epidemiological point of view. In the first phase, we have seen more elderly, more comorbidity. In second part, we are seeing the more young generation and we are losing young patients quite frequently. Reason because it's not the mutant virus itself. We haven't vaccinated the young population. Yes, absolutely. So that is one reason I believe. And always you see young generation. Don't so they're even vulnerable. So they're yeah. even vulnerable. Okay. Uh, I'll come back to you to talk about the plasma because the government of India is now talking about that plasma is no longer required. But let's, let's, uh, we already have now, uh, Dr. Shubra Jyoti Bhomik has joined with us. Dr. Bhomik, the vaccine issue has coming up. And you are the person, you are one of the person who's been kind of leading the new vaccine trials on, on, on Johnson and Sputnik and likewise. Uh, tell us with a bit of a positives, let's start with a bit of a positives. When we expect this Sputnik and, and Johnson to hit the market and actually be used? Dr. Bhomik. Yeah, good evening, everybody. And thank you for this opportunity. So Sputnik is already in India. We already know that Dr. Reddy's laboratory has brought in a consignment from Russia, which is uh, to the tune of few lakh doses. We, uh, in our, you know, we, we have been told that they are contacting hospitals across the country and Sputnik vaccination in Hyderabad has already begun in the country. So let's be positive that in the next few months, Sputnik will emerge as one of the third uh, important vaccine which will be given in, in the country. Okay. Uh, we will also have to, I will also have to share that only it is not uh, Dr. Reddy's laboratory which the Drug Controller General has allowed to market Sputnik in India but it has allowed another five more companies to market this. So the exclusivity does not lie with Dr. Reddy's anymore. What the other companies have to do is to do an equivalence trial one such equivalence trial is happening at PLS Hospital at our hospital in Calcutta and they are the, the company Hetero Healthcare versus uh, this Dr. Reddy's vaccine will be tested and moment, uh, this is a very short trial, moment they show that it's equivalent, we will have more and more Indian manufacturers. So Hetero Healthcare so will come in. when realistically the these are supposed to come? So I would put, I, so I, my discussion with the Dr. Reddy's lab, they have told me that you know, the strong supply will begin from July because that's when proof right. of doses are expected. And I would say to be very optimistically speaking from around September, a lot of things are changing as far as the vaccines are in the country is concerned. Okay. So uh, Pfizer vaccine is also supposed to make entry into the country because the DCGI has changed regulations with respect to Pfizer vaccine. Psycho D interim data has been submitted to the DCGI's office. So we are expecting... But Pfizer has gone into some kind of a problem with the government of India. 
about the indemnity bond being signed and all that. Right, so but, that's but, a, some issue being going on out there. Yeah, there Mr. is, but there is, but uh, I am very hopeful because the DCGI's office has changed a lot of regulations. Initially, they had asked for an Indian clinical okay. trial that has been dropped. So I, so Pfizer vaccine is supposed to enter, but before that, Zyco B, which is our another indigenous vaccine from India, which is a DNA plasmid vaccine, will see the uh, light, and this will be approved hopefully in June because okay. the phase three data is already being analyzed. Fine. Uh, before I go over to Professor Dajgupta and Dr. Rai for the same issue, Dr. Bhomik, very quick opinion from you regarding this recent shift, and I also will go to the my Bangladesh and Sri Lanka friends about their idea on that, is in India, recently the COVID shield duration between first and second dose has been extended to 12 to 16 weeks. If you look, at, look back at the history, it was initially four weeks, then four to six weeks, then six to eight weeks, now 12 to 16 weeks. On the contrary, UK has kind of preponded by four weeks from 12 to eight weeks. How do you see, Dr. Bhomik, changing the goalpost number of times? By design or by default? Well, to be honest, I would say it was because of two reasons. The primary reason is acute scarcity of vaccine. We don't have vaccines in this country. And let me tell you the reason why we don't have, because we believe... So we don't have the vaccines? Yeah, so because, we, because we believe that no one is safe until everyone is safe. So, absolutely. You know, what, what we did is we sent 60 million doses to the lower middle income countries including Brazil, African nations, whereas, uh, you know, and that is a government policy, I would say as a, as, as an Indian citizen, I would say central government really did a wrong decision at that point of time because they should have taken care of the Indian public before uh, trying to support the other nations, whereas US and UK okay. have not done that. And Absolutely. of course, there is a scientific evidence that Professor Shaw's paper from Oxford University clearly shows that when the vaccine dosage is increased to 12 weeks, the efficacy rises to 81%, whereas it is only 70% when, when the doses are reduced to 6 to 8 weeks. I think it would have been better that the government advisory committee should have... Would have been better. Directly, would have been better. Directly, directly to 12 weeks rather than bringing in interim 6 to 8 weeks. So that created a lot of confusion. Okay. Just on that line, let first Dr. Rai and then Professor Daj Gupta. Dr. Rai, so it is by design or by default? Because this is creating a huge lot of confusion. Even the doctors are saying that we took it after four weeks. Are we safe enough? So as Public Health Association IPHA president, how do you see to it, Dr. Rai? You see, in, uh, in India, we have two vaccines. One is Covaxin and another is Covishield. Covishield is Oxford AstraZeneca. So they conducted a clinical trial in three countries initially, Brazil, UK, and South Africa. They published um, efficacy data in Lancet um, of uh, these two trials, Brazil and um, UK. So they used a standard dose at four week gap. So with four week apart with the standard dose, the efficacy was 62.1%. Uh, in few subjects, they used um, uh, half dose. And in those subjects, the efficacy was around 90%. So uh, pooled um, data showed that um, efficacy is around 70%. Then they found in subgroup analysis that if gap is more, the efficacy is more, it's more than the 62.1%. So 70% efficacy was not with the standard dose. We are using currently, we are using the standard dose, two standard dose at four week or six week are now in the 12 to 18 week apart. Um, UK also uh, initially they uh, increased the uh, duration from six week to eight week and then 12 week, but now they have reduced the gap. Uh, yes. So uh, see, if you are not um, uh, uh, protecting with the two gap, our initial thought was based on the clinical trial data, we used to say that, um, see, you are only protected after the two dose and two week after the second dose. So you are not fully protected uh, after maybe before the second dose. Yes. Uh, now we are increasing the, uh, this duration, the gap of, uh, for almost three to four months. So till such time, till that time, we are not protected. Uh, so the, I, ideally, there should be a balanced approach um, between yes. the optimum don't protection. You, don't you think that 
don't you think that government could have done it better better communication from the very beginning clearly telling the people the situation is and all that it just just looks like to the common people like us as because government doesn't have the vaccine they are kind of pushing the goal post down the um, line see this could be one of the reason logistic management not only in india in, in other countries also like uk did this uh, and then finally now they have vaccine so they reduce this so this could be one of the reason one of but the reason. Uh, okay uh, yeah Um, definitely, I agree with you. But uh, the main reason is um, uh, this efficacy. That if you are increasing the, um, the duration, the efficacy, the efficacy is increasing. But the problem yeah. is in this type of situation where when the infection rate is very high, uh, if you are increasing um, your uh, this gap, then then you are actually exposing them. Protected. Yeah, you are you are exposing them. Very very important point. On that point, the Professor Das Gupta, you and Dr. Rai and everybody is saying that the. now it is entering from india to bharat and if we look at the vaccination profile though we have a reasonable vaccination perhaps the cities like delhi kolkata or mumbai you go beyond those borders you go to the peri urban and the rural areas the vaccination is very poor so those people who are completely unprotected or relatively unprotected are now being bombarded with this vaccine with the variants how do you see that dr das gupta um that's absolutely correct in fact over the last one week uh various uh, various ground reports in in different publications have actually carried a number of stories uh of Uh, of of what the perception among rural and tribal communities are around the vaccine and to that extent in more specific terms the vaccine hesitancy among these uh, communities uh, the point is that this shouldn't have ideally this shouldn't have come from the media stories but a more concerted effort proactively should have been done you were, you were referring to the communication strategy Uh, the, the vaccination program has just not been backed by a communication strategy uh, which goes beyond uh, no, no, the 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 no, 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 sorry to interrupt you sorry to interrupt you yeah, yeah. sorry to interrupt you uh, that what held us back we had such a wonderful communication strategy for one of the largest vaccination program that polio why couldn't we use that infrastructure we could use that expertise we could use that whatever knowledge we gathered from there and use here why we did we needed to do everything from the scratch i don't understand the logic behind it uh i can't i can't answer that because i'm a bit of a insider and outsider both uh however uh this this particular strategy Uh, sorry this particular vaccine um, program uh, depended too much on the app uh, essentially essentially a phenomenon of scientism and techno utopia and and therefore the learning both from the routine immunization program as well as from uh, pulse polio and measles uh, rubella elimination program they were just not applied here for reasons best known to the program managers conversely if i am a program manager in the state uh, this kind of vaccine supply situation does me no good it it keeps me on tenter hooks and and if i am a program manager in this at the state level or at the district level this just doesn't excite excite me whether 150 million uh, sorry uh, whatever million doses of sputnik is coming in or produced or or what negotiation is going on with pfizer and exactly. so on it it, exactly. it it just doesn't make any sense to me because i have to plan for my district or my state and there is simply no assured supply or schedule as far as my uh, program unit goes and 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 that that's that's really uh, extremely bothersome and and unfortunately none of these program managers feature in any of the expert groups at the national level so i think i think extremely important point being raised very strong point being raised i'll come to shubhra for for a response later but let's very quickly go to bangladesh now uh that what do you think uh, uh dr shikdar about the vaccination program at in your country you are, i understand you have been impacted a bit with india perhaps withdrawing the bit of a vaccine 
with its own difficulty. But how you see, Dr. Shikdar, how is this vaccination program going on in your country? Thank you very much. Actually, you see, Bangladesh was in a uh, top priority regarding AstraZeneca, uh, uh, which you are being called the COVID uh, shield. Uh, uh, India supplied two, 20 lakhs mm -hmm. Mochi vaccine to Bangladesh, free of cost. Mm -hmm. And 70 lakhs vaccine was primarily uh, being uh, supplied to Bangladesh. And it was quite a uh, high number in comparison to many of developed countries. Well. So Bangladesh was quite satisfactory level at initial stage of vaccination. But thing is that after first dose vaccination, and not only this thing, even uh, many of our common people are very much reluctant to get vaccine to, to be vaccinated. But uh, when it was being very much popularized among these urban people and uh, affluent people, then um, uh, common interest uh, are being uh, drawn to our uh, common people. And that if the demand was being very much high, when this demand is increasing, then suddenly it was uh, uh, very difficult to get the uh, vaccine very readily from uh, not only from uh, India, even from uh, uh, Sputnik vaccine or, or vaccine from uh, uh, USA or from any other source. So it is uh, in a very difficult situation for Bangladesh that we are not getting the exact number of vaccine which is uh, essential for Bangladesh. But thing is that uh, our... Uh, you are getting it from China. China. You are getting it from China, no? From yes, China? A, a, small a, a small number of vaccines are being imported from uh, China. But uh, this was not in true sense the... Uh, at satisfactory level because you know it was not earlier uh, uh, trialed in Bangladesh. Uh, there are many confusion regarding the Chinese vaccine in Bangladesh and they are not actually supplying the uh, exact desired number or required okay. number. Okay. So, so Bangladesh in, in a, 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 a bit difficult situation. So we have a struggle. We have a struggle with the vaccine actually, now. May I may I add uh, uh, some uh, in, information regarding the previous discussion. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, the um, gap between the first dose and uh, second dose. Yes. Is interest, this is an interesting situation, you know. The pioneer country, even UK, or I mean this AstraZeneca, Oxford, or, or Pfizer, or even Sputnik, or many other countries, those who are the pioneer in producing a vaccine, they uh, they are in confusion of whether it, is, it should be there. Uh, four weeks apart, or or uh, six weeks apart, or twelve weeks apart. Uh, so I think that the exact data will come from the clinical environment. I mean, this those who are being vaccinated, whether they are facing any problem, their antibody is growing up. They are so well. Those studies are required. Protection. Those studies these, are required. These, these these data should come from the clinical uh, clinical field. And this okay. will be the actual, actual, actual. Okay, yes. great. Let's first quickly hear about the Sri Lankan situation. Mm -hmm. How is the vaccination program in Sri Lanka? Dr. Yes, yes. Yeah, we have actually ran into a big crisis because we started the vaccination program with the uh, Kovishi vaccine, uh, 500,000 doses uh, received as a gift from India. And then there was also another 500,000 doses which was uh, procured uh, through the uh, Serum Institute of India and then there was also 264,000 doses uh, received from COVAX. So we had 1.2 million doses ready and the vaccine rollout started with frontline health workers being vaccinated first. However, uh, earlier we discussed about the, the gap between the first and the second dose. So initially it was planned to be given between four and eight weeks but when, when the vaccine was running, you know, the, the supply was running short, they uh, extended it to uh, 16 weeks. Now there's also talk about 20 weeks. So now we have vaccinated 900,000 from the COVID shield vaccine and balance uh, 600,000 uh, doses is required and we are in a crisis already uh, that uh, uh, that uh, cohort needs the vaccine within the next two weeks. If not, uh, I, I think we'll, we'll not be able to give the second so, vaccine. So they again, the bit of a, bit of a pressure. But what about the yeah. schedule here in between the first dose and second dose of COVID shield you have? What you were yes, maintaining in, in Sri Lanka? 16 to, 16 to 18 weeks. How much? 16 to 18 weeks is the gap. 
between the oh, first that, and the second. That's a gap out there. Yeah, okay. that is that happened by default again because of the shortage of supply. And now the uh, approval has been given to uh, uh, Sinopharm vaccine and also Sputnik. Both have been donated by the two countries, and we are now starting uh, the first dose with the uh, with Sinopharm and uh, and uh, Sputnik. Okay, okay, great. Let's Shubhra. Now we 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 talking about the vaccines and this vaccines availability, the urban rural divide and everything. But another dimension, I think, is a very interesting dimension is a variant and the variant is making this game pretty interesting and now it's being told that indian variant that is it's called indian variant but government of india has said that take out the india from the variant's name that b1.617 uh, that is being Uh, the first dose with the uh, with Sinopharm and uh, and uh, Sputnik. Okay, okay, great. Let's Shubhra. Now we 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 talking about the vaccines and this vaccines availability, the urban rural divide and everything. But another dimension, I think, the very interesting dimension is a variant, and the variant is making this game pretty interesting. And now it's being told that Indian variant that is it's called Indian variant, but government of India has said that take out the India from the variant's name, that B1.617, uh, that is being now found from about 44 countries. So, Shubhra, what's your take on this variant issue right now? How, how difficult it can be for the overall immunity? Mm, I think the studies uh, right now that we have evidence from uh, does show that the uh, vaccines we have are effective against these variants, some of these variants. Uh, surely we have the first round of studies coming out uh, on the B1617, which is the uh, one which is concerning everybody. So I don't think we need to really worry about, uh, mm, you know, the vaccines not being effective uh, against them. However, the worry, uh, as far as I understand, is about the transmissibility and also because these are highly transmissible variants, the number of uh, you know, people getting affected in South Asia is increasingly becoming mind boggling because of the variants. And so, uh, and uh, the other thing that virologists uh, say is that um, you know, the number of people affected makes for a good storehouse or a mine minefield for the number of variants to increase. So uh, the variants will happen only when you have a huge number of population uh, affected by the virus. So, so that the virus has a nice uh, field to mutate. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that is one of the worries that India is becoming the hotspot of variants across Absolutely. the world. Absolutely. So, uh, so this, this, this is the thing that, but I want to quickly come back a little to the vaccine question as well, Jantada, mm -hmm. because I, I think that some of the things that uh, India is doing um, needs mention here. One is, this is the first ever adult, uh, large-scale adult immunization program mm -hmm. that we must not forget. Uh, we, we cannot compare it with the polio program or the rubella program, primarily because of this, because each adult has to be vaccinated and we should not also forget that this is a pandemic situation uh, where people have several things going on in their mind. People are dying, people are getting affected. We have so much confusion. So in this environment, there's never been a vaccination program, this kind of an environment. So th these are the constraints, I would think, for a vaccination program alongside, of course, the digital divide and all of that you've already mentioned. Okay. So, Okay, but one quick thing, we, we, I take the answer later. You talk about, or we talk about the B1.617. Now I wrote a copy a few days back talking to uh, various uh, experts who are doing the genetic count, the sequencing that the 1.617.2, 
that the sub lineage that is having an apparently a mexican mutation a mutation which originally found in a mexican variant a variant found in mexico politically correct to be politically correct and that mutation was found to be triggering the huge rise in mexico and now the experts are believing here that particular mutation along with that original b1.617 combined that combination is impacting it so what's your take on that i'll take it later but let's go to dr sharkar dr sharkar how difficult for you as a as a as a doctor when you are treating when all these variants are coming into the picture and making this whole thing uh, much more difficult how how say it how different clinically when you are treating the patients variants or no variants this time good uh, as a clinician we are not bothered about what variant this yes. gentleman or this patient has got we are concerned about their symptoms their severity and whether they are going to respond my treatment or not that that is my concern absolutely and uh, qualitatively there had been some difference from phase 1 to phase 2 as i mentioned in previous talk that more younger generations we are getting right now and the qualitative difference is last time when they are going into the severe to critical phase they are either dying or they are getting better within 10 to 15 days okay staying in the itu this time every patient is staying with us we say uh, i would say a status quo status they are say if they are on niv ventilation non invasive sticking to this for 10 15 days without changing their parameters and uh, because of the lung it, if they been affected with this variant is is not getting better quickly or is not deteriorating quickly so that is the difference this time i am everyone is not my impression everyone all the intensivists yes. in calcutta has got this and reason because that we are now having bed in the general wards because there is some decline but we don't have any bed in the icu because the icu beds are being occupied with the patients who have been for months before still we are many patients are staying with us with the problem and their lung is really really bad but the lung is bad as we know the treatment in a better way previously we didn't know how to tackle this bad lung so we could manage to control their saturation control them with the other supportive treatment also they are going into ecmo one of my uh, neighbor hospital is running 24 ecmo machines yes but parf seen uh, i don't know how many centers has got that to do and we have got one ecmo machine and he was asking me that do you have spare machine so <laughs> so many patients are hypoxic and staying in the hypoxic state not being affected with the treatment this is one thing i think something wrong with this variant this is my impression and okay. uh, yeah. share another experience with us uh, now there's all this talks about vaccines and all that despite variants in the picture uh, what's your experience that people who have taken two doses of vaccine and uh, people who haven't taken two doses of vaccine uh, are you finding any different yeah. uh, sir, good question uh, severity uh, or mortality and uh, when i'm getting patients i always take and i told my dnb junior candidate that please take whether that patient had been vaccinated or not if they have been vaccinated whether they have got the two vaccines or not if they have the vaccines whether it's a covishield or covaxin so we are trying to find out the data and okay. also find out the severity of the this is process even share are, uh, share with us few data whatever you uh, have I, we, i'm doing that work but uh, great uh, so we will have some answer in future so okay so any any data to share we you, you, we are working uh, on that uh, it's a it's a two vaccines even after getting two vaccine we are getting patients but they are not that severe uh, okay the problem so those who have got one vaccine and uh, even with one vaccine they are getting severity of some protection second variation protection but even then they are getting severity of symptoms 
so with the two vaccines i think it's one should complete their vaccination as soon as possible o obviously the gap we have so bottom line is to take two vaccines as I, soon as possible my suggestion is that get the two vaccine as soon as possible if you Great. want to get rid of this dr rai you you heard dr shorka saying that give them two vaccines if you want to save lives give them two vaccines but as of now the vaccination in india in i i i rather say in a bit of a jeopardy and again as i said that urban and rural uh, divide and all that now above everything this whole issue of third wave coming already officially being said the deadline is october to january so what do you think that what india should do hopefully by 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 july we will see the bit of an end of the second wave and third wave to start from october to january what india should do in between to save the lives of its citizen so first i will reply to the previous question related to vaccination see no doubt there is a mismatch in demand and supply all over world we just heard sri lanka bangladesh in india also um although there are currently 15 vaccines approved by the various regulatory authorities of the different countries but definitely there is a mismatch and there is a growing concern of this vaccine inequality in, uh, especially of the third world countries so in current scenario vaccine is a very precious uh, commodity and we must use very judiciously many countries including india have created a priority list and um, so this is good um this way we can reduce um, this mismatch but another one is um we have sufficient evidence that uh, your um, natural infection is providing also better and longer duration of prote protection so um, for current um, vaccination program this should not be in the priority list like in our country uh, more than 2 um, crore people have uh, been, uh, they are already infected these are the reported cases actual number are definitely more so we can reduce the mismatch so we can save 4 crore in india itself um, um, all over world more than 30 crores uh, 16 crores um, more than are infected so we can reduce there are various way and second one is the prioritization Uh, there is no need to vaccinate each and every body see what vaccine is going to do vaccine is not reducing the your this infection it's mainly reducing your severity so protecting ag against your severity and um, we just heard from dr sarkar that many people and everywhere we are seeing so now like um, we i used to say that uh, you, we can achieve herd immunity through both vaccination and natural infection now uh, i can't say that um, uh, we can achieve uh, we will achieve vac uh, herd immunity through both because the, in a, what is herd immunity herd immunity you are protecting others who are not protected Uh, through uh, a pool of uh, this uh, vaccinated or um, uh, protected people but if a person after vaccination is getting infection so uh, through vac vaccination we will reduce the impact of um, yes. mortality and also the hospitalization rate etc but definitely for this uh, sooner or later everybody will get and through natural infection will get the immunity only what um, what do you feel what do you feel you said that everybody now, will get it what's your according to you as as ipha president you have a very important role to play in this whole policy formation or the policy implementation what's your personal thinking when india in general can have this most of it people be covered with this vaccine uh, no, no, definitely not by the end of this year um not by the end of this year yeah um somewhere um, either by middle of next year or um, first book by definitely by first quarter of the uh, this looks like uh, see the current production is our uh, two these vaccine manufacturers serum institute and uh, bharat biotech they are the main you you support you support the view that now this whole formula with some business mechanism should be given over to other companies for preparing that um, is being raised by your former prime minister raised by your Uh, bjp uh, minister about that no see it's very difficult to say um, uh, see like uh, one your this uh, bharat biotech vaccine that is a um, whole variant inactivated uh, vaccine and if um, suppose if you are not um, maintaining the safety standard that they may cause disaster is see if, okay. if okay. inactivation is not proper so it's not a very not, easy not that easy so, not that easy yeah. to do that but the, okay <clears throat> but you, you feel by next year by mid of next year uh, 
most of the uh, people can most of the people will get can have it yeah. professor dashgupta your take on that and also about this hard immunity because now we are vaccinating people and also a lot of people are getting affected almost every day around 3 lakhs now are getting affected uh, it was 4 lakhs a week before so what's your take on that with third wave coming vaccination program the way it is going the kind of people are getting the your take on third wave well <clears throat> uh, predicting a third wave is a function of three things uh, modeling exercises uh genomic surveillance uh and and correlating the genomic surveillance with clinical data or or in other words the clinical epidemiology approach exactly what uh, some of the things that do, uh, dr sarkar was uh, alluding to so so predicting the third wave uh, we will will need to factor in all of these uh the fact is that vaccination is one of the key pillars one of the key pillars uh, and and as 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 other other panelists have also been pointing out that there is a global crisis too and the, and and all vaccine markets have always been global uh, including including uh, the whole lot of pediatric vaccines uh, so so and on one hand there is nothing new about it but yes given that this is a pandemic situation all countries are scrambling to to corner as much as possible for their own citizens uh, the question is that india having a head start of sorts compared to many other countries having this very large pharmaceutical industry base how best that can be leveraged and and whether it's voluntary licensing whether it's compulsory licensing there is a there is a lot of advantage that india has and it's not just india uh, if if india were to produce a lot in in india can also uh, also uh, share, share share the the benefits with the region as well and and if i if i read the statement correctly of of the external affairs minister's visit to the us uh, it is both about negoti negotiating vaccines not just for india but for the south asian neighbors also so so there is a south asian dimension being being put on the minister uh, on the uh, on on the external affairs minister's visit and therefore india's pharmaceutical industry uh, can actually extend that i mean continue to extend that hand of vaccine maitri and make not just india uh, more secure but the region also absolutely and in fact in fact uh, just hearing you something came into my mind that if india remains unself the world remains unsafe so we have to ensure that india remains safe the, the the global community has to ensure that india remains safe for the sake of the world so let's very quickly talk, talk to our uh, kind of neighbors of india and uh, their situation see uh, it, 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 let's let's start with bangladesh first that uh, how prepared you are for the next wave what it will be coming and how you see that uh, dr shahidullah actually you see uh, we are a bit now at the satisfactory mode but uh, this would not be a, a, a sustaining uh, matter uh, so uh, as you are also assuming that there might have some uh, uh, web like third web uh, but bangladesh is uh, also uh, thinking that there might have some web so we are prepared by increasing the number of uh, covid bed increasing the number of uh icu bed increasing the number of high flow oxygen bed like this it, it is the management part but exactly the thing is that we need to have preventive measure first that is vaccination that is preparedness of our common people that is uh, preparedness of <coughs> further uh, arresting of further contamination this is the, the thing this propaganda is very much going on and we are uh, our government and the field workers the health workers everybody is thinking that there might have some webs again and it may, might increase and there might have some devastating situation so uh, our people are very much <laughs> prepared and government so also prepared. Very much prepared so you were prepared but but uh, dr shahidullah only point is india felt that it was well prepared uh, at some point of time in fact our health minister said the game is over 
very famously said that game is over, actually, but almost actually, over. Ac but actually, <laughs> actually, actually, nobody can say that we are safe, we are prepared, we are well equipped. Nobody can say. Exactly, Neither India, exactly. nor Bangladesh, nor even USA can say that they are safe. It's so, a, it's a, it's a game in a different we, pitch. It's a game yeah, in a different actually, pitch. We may not be knowing that pitch actually. Actually, actually, actually you see, this as we are thinking about this new variant, whether the variant is only from India or UK or South Africa, there might have variant from Bangladesh or variant from Sri Lanka, variant from many other countries. So we, we should be prepared for a future that there might have some new variant, okay. there might have some a new struggle for management of patients, new struggle for vaccination. How far these common available vaccines are working against this COVID? This is also questionable, that's, that's you know? So, so we should be prepared uh, uh, for a, 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 a very, very big battle. So as, as we can assume that the situation might, might go this way, that is why we have some preparedness. But exactly so. Absolutely. This is the final I completely get your point. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. May I go outside because I have... Uh, we will be, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be winding up shortly, within five minutes. So uh, you can stay here because if any <laughs> question comes about Bangladesh, you are the principal <laughs> answer. We'll be winding up by five, seven minutes. Let's very quickly go to... Uh, I'll be coming to Dr. Shorkar. I'll be coming to Dr. Shorkar. You would like to very quickly intervention, yeah, Dr. Shorkar? Regarding hard wave, I'm very optimistic. What I feel that anyway, we can protect if we have vaccination program and we have a definite antiviral drugs, which we haven't tried yet. Just one drug is in the market coming, MSD has produced. So, new DRDO, no, new DRDO. Oh, no, that is not, that is supportive treatment. Okay. Antiviral, viricidal drug, uh, molnupiravir. One drug is coming, MSD has produced that, and it has shown that within 24 hours, it can block the uh, replications of this virus. And if we can block this virus, then we can prevent the transmission or spread of this virus. So you feel uh, that with vaccination and this new drug, we can, we can control the game. Outsider and five companies, Indian companies have, have Working on that. The, that the, that's good news at least. There's some some that good news. I, I think we can prevent if we are successful with yeah. that drug. Some positive. Some positives come out. Great. Uh, I'm coming to you again for the last question, but let's go to Dr. Aryanath. Dr. Aryanath, how prepared Sri Lanka is trying to they're getting the preparation go up in context of the next wave that may come to your country. Are you well, I, I don't think we are even thinking of the next wave because we, we are at the peak of the third wave. So, so we are, you are not handling the... Our, our priority is to break transmission. And then it has actually started now with government from yesterday night, uh, giving in to the pressure from the Sri Lanka Medical Association and most of us who are working outside the government system to really uh, have a lockdown. So we are in a lockdown now. So we have recommended a, a two weeks lockdown, but the government is not. So the Sri Lanka is now right going through a lockdown. It's a yes. national lockdown. National lockdown for three days, but then there's a break for twelve hours. Then again, another almost one week lockdown. Okay. But the okay. medical is Bangladesh is also going through the lockdown. Bangladesh is going through lockdown. Yes, actually, Bangladesh uh, have uh, many experience of partial lockdown, full lockdown, urban lockdown. Even, so, even so lockdown is happening out there. <laughs> so, lockdown. so we have experience of lockdown and we are prepared. Our people knows that uh, we might have uh, some lockdown and uh, our okay. people are okay. very okay. much Fine, fine. Let's, let's come to uh, Shubra. Uh, Shubra, uh, two things. You have heard the whole experts from various countries. Now, what's your take? See this variance again coming back to the variance because uh, I, I didn't mention it, but also the Singapore variant is now in the game. With, uh, with the Delhi Chief Minister talking about the Singapore variant and uh, with the Mexican gene and all this. Aren't this a big spicing up the whole thing? Or you think that, uh, yes, we are, as Dr. Sharkar pointing out, with good vaccination program, uh, robust vaccination program, trying to vaccinate two vaccines, all patients, maybe the Johnson single vaccine and also the antiviral drug, we will be able to control it, the third wave. How do you see the third wave spiraling, Shubra? I think, I mean, all the panelists have said what they had to say, and uh, I, I am both optimistic as well as slightly, you know, I crunch numbers for a living. So I'll, I'll throw some numbers at you all. 
and then you decide for yourself where we are uh, in the vaccination game as well as you know the entire thing so um early this year the prime minister made a statement at the world economic forum in devos he said vaccination target of 300 million people which means 600 million vaccine doses absolutely by july 2021 as of today we have given um this morning till till this evening we have given 193 about 193 million doses out of which also has been uh, 43 million people who have got both doses it's anybody's guess how we are going to meet these big targets 600 million by july 2021 now let me come to the vaccination rate we started vaccination on 16 january we had gone up to a daily average of 3.65 million by april and in may we slid back to 1.8 million doses that's because of the dwindling number supply of vaccines that we very well know so if you calculate we'd be reaching somewhere close to half of our target end of july the serum institute and bharat biotech manufactures 65 plus 20 85 million doses per month they have sought grants from the government to increase this production and the government has given those grants in the form of advance payment uh, in april when the second wave hit us Uh, now the manufacturers claim they can together make about 180 million doses a month including their global commitments mm. putnik has come 0.2 million doses have reached us as you heard from uh, dr ashubhajyoti shakar uh, he said that uh, you know a more russian direct investment fund has signed uh, agreements with local companies here to make about 50 million doses per month there are other con- constraints about you know several components single use containers in which vaccine cells are grown etc now at the current rate of vaccination india has a long road ahead you know if you roughly calculate in order to vaccinate about 945 million adult citizens we will require 1.8 billion doses in total that will make at the current vaccination rate it will take up to 3 years to vaccinate this population so let me just break the myth of us getting vaccinated by somewhere next year i mean i'll i'm so that's, that's the reality of ground but, that's but the reality of ground that's what the numbers are saying and at the same time i must uh, you know talk about you you asked another what's question. your take shubra what's your take shubra on the dr manmohan singh's proposal which is being reiterated by uh, a very senior minister in the bjp cabinet that this now this whole vaccine formulas can be shared with other other agencies who can manufacture vaccine and actually can horizontally more manufacture can be ensured what's your take on that very quickly we are running out of time just five minutes yeah my take really won't matter because it's a question of uh, whether the vaccine manufacturers are going to let go of their formula it actually boils down to that so i make something i make a vaccine i am a manufacturer even if it's a pandemic chubra where the people where the world is dying the people yes. around you are dying people in your families are dying then do you still continue to think about this commercial things in such a rigid manner if i own serum institute i probably would have a say in this i do not own but you know well, we have That's different true. ideas okay <laughs> great my last question i want a single line answer don't expand it because we are we we expanded it already 15 minutes the program is that we have seen few days back that the usa when a meeting was going on with the president and some of his kind of colleagues and the and the kind of a news came that cdc said that you can take out your mask maybe within the closed room and they took out the mask and said freedom when i can and you can or all of us can say freedom in india sri lanka bangladesh when the time probably can come i know that corona is going to stay forever it kind of from pandemic to endemic it can become but at least some sort of normalcy in life when it can come back start with dr rai single word when you expect it to happen if at all in the first place yeah the way infection is um, in the, in the proceeding and um, infecting many people 
uh, it's depend um, the, what is the percentage of the circle population is this pool is low so now i can believe that's why um, i didn't comment anything on the third wave i don't think that we will ever face a very third wave um, a very big third wave um, with this type of variant see we must prepare ourselves for any type of variant or any uh, new uh, epidemic or pandemic so when the normalcy right? can come back huh. so um, in the next 2 to 3 month not uh, months yeah in next 2 to 3 months the way we are moving uh, see no in, in just i'm talking about delhi delhi had um, zero positivity of 50% almost 50% right in current wave this should be around somewhere around 70 to 80 percent until date whatever evidence we have i can say a um, naturally infected you know, people is well protected and protection is for longer duration so if we feel that um, uh, and uh, that will be see how will we decide uh, the best option is the zero survey so a, a quick zero survey must be done just after one or zero survey must be done well fine dr dash gupta very quickly when we can well, come back to the normal scene life i won't hazard that instead of uh, one word freedom i would borrow from what the manager is using three words hands face face i think we are still confined to three words and not one word thank you very much okay uh, shubhra same here i think as a science communicator i don't want to say freedom yet uh, let's mask up till we haven't seen the end of it uh, and I, i see that as a very negative communication uh, when people take off masks and say uh, here comes freedom i don't think we are yet anywhere close to doing that masks have to be our routine for a long time to come so mask is now part of your next What's whatever fashion statement you are going to Absolutely. do uh, bangladesh what do you feel Actually, actually i think it needs at least one year more one year uh, more. fine yeah, fine one, one year, year more year. at least at least a timeline you are now getting uh, what least. about sri lanka sri lanka uses one word that's called dream distancing respiratory etiquette asepsis and mask we'll continue that i can't give a timeline thank you <laughs> okay and finally finally with dr shorkar uh, you are you are i know a very optimistic person despite seeing every day hundreds of patients what's according to you, when we can come back to the normal life as you have mentioned that we have to live with this virus for many years not many one years. or two years so we cannot give up this mask probably we have to use and i put it in another way using this mask i am seeing much much less number of tb patients in my clinic so the number of communicable disease airborne disease has reduced from respiratory point of view because i do practice that's a co benefit we that's so a co benefit you got collateral benefit not damage Absolutely. so it's a collateral benefit we but, have to get. but 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 I, really really do we really do we want to have the mask always when we oh, go out uh, no, no but you should use them you know strategically way when you are going to some gathering when we are going to you know the private pri public transport it's so and you have to use it okay I think so, so, so selective way the selective way so not for corona for other diseases as well okay great i think we had a wonderful discussion we we kind of expanded the time for about 15 minutes to to accommodate all your views uh not really a very hopeful situation only point is that in india it seems to declining slightly uh, so in bangladesh or sri lanka is bit of bit of a rise other south asian countries bit of a decline but again these are very very i would say uh, not a permanent picture these are coming up and down if you look at the pakistan graph the shubhra is like this you are talking about first second and third wave pakistan has so many waves i really don't know if you look at the pakistan they are like this almost like a, a ecg ecg <laughs> kind of output like thing so uh, but the thing remains is that uh, i think I, i i will kind of end up with what dr sharkar said and all of you said actually that vaccines 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 and vaccines if the treatment of corona is oxygen oxygen and oxygen then the medicine is vaccine vaccine and vaccine at this point of time vaccines are not full proof people are getting affected after get, taking vaccines even two doses but as dr sharkar and all of you pointed out 
it is less severe, mortality wise less less compared to the people who are not taking it. That's why the youngers are. I, I shared with you very quickly 30 seconds. In this second wave, I was getting to the data. 300 journalists died in last two months. Average every day, three to four journalists are dying. In comparison, the medical professionals who are fighting from the front and who died in a lot of numbers in the first wave, the number is much less in second wave because simply because I believe they are all being vaccinated and being really protected. So that's in one way showing the importance and impact of vaccine. Shubra Jyoti has just joined, I think. I couldn't see him for last word, Shubra Jyoti. When do you feel that this 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 third wave is coming and, and how you deal with that? Very quickly, Shubra Jyoti, we run out of time. As we no, already I, saw you. I, no, I think we the third wave, the only way to stop it is vaccinating in children. Vaccination in children trials have begun in India. They have already, we have an advisor vaccine which is approved for children from 12 to 18 years. So let's not be negative, let's be positive that in six months vaccination of children will begin in the country. Are these vaccines are coming, going to come out in the market, in the normal retail market? So, so already, so I think my, my take again it will be, it will be initially controlled by the government, but the government is changing policy and we see that they are available, that Sputnik is allowed to come into the market. But Pfizer vaccine, if it enters India in September, October, let me tell you, it will come with the pediatric vaccine as okay. well. So that is good news. Uh, I mean, no, uh, last one second. I yes. do not agree with this. See, vaccine is not going to prevent any wave. Vaccine is going to prevent only your best uh, severity or hospitalization, right? Whatever but, evidence we have. But now. If, if you look so at the wave in a bit of a qualitative manner, Yes, can be reduced. Reduced. Maybe right. the numbers will be there, yeah. but if the deaths are, can be reduced because we are yeah. seeing our and fellow countrymen dying on road without oxygen. Uh, we really don't. We, we should. We should uh, believe I, science I, I, and evidence. We I will end evidence. up with this, and Dr. Rai Shundalal Bahagunaji, Padma Vibhushan Shundalal Bahagunaji, who is a person who fought for trees, not failing, opposing the failing of trees throughout his life, in a way so that the oxygen is not depleted, died yesterday for the lack of oxygen. That to me, Actions Pathways, Episode 20 with Kamrul Shodri. Today, we are going to discuss the outcome of G7 and also virtual SB sessions, which is a prolonged one for three weeks and also G7 summit next month how best uh, it is going to have snowball effects in paving oils in our road to Glasgow, COP26. Are we going to keep the dream alive, 1.5 degree temperature regime rise as ambition in 2015 landmark Paris Agreement. So it's a huge, huge question. We need to raise the ambition, not only net zero at the earliest, but also adaptation ambition. Ambition for means of implementation, adaptation, loss and damage, induced by climatic events. 
and also technology transfer and capacity building.